Our example states, a voltaic cell utilizes the reaction shown below at 298 Kelvin. Calculate the cell potential under standard conditions. This question is asking us to find E of the cell, which can also be referred to as the cell potential or EMF. Since this is under standard conditions, we'll represent this with a degree symbol. Let's go over each step. Step one, write the half reactions. To be able to do this, we first need to find the oxidation numbers of each substance, then figure out which reaction is oxidation and which reaction is reduction. Let's start with finding our oxidation numbers. Recall our oxidation number rules are as follows. If an element is by itself and is in its solid state, then it has an oxidation number of zero. So this aluminum has an oxidation number of zero, and so does this manganese. The next rule that applies is when we have one element with a charge. That same charge is the oxidation number. So this manganese would be two, and this aluminum would be three. Note, all oxidation number rules and formulas used in this video and all of chemistry can be found in my free chemistry survival guide. Download that now using the link in the description so you never have to waste time searching through your book or notes for one formula. Continuing on with this question, we can now write the half reactions by only including the same elements on either side. So aluminum on the reactant side will go here, and the other aluminum on the product side will go here. This is the same concept for manganese. Now we can identify which half reaction is oxidation or reduction. In an oxidation reaction, we lose electrons. And in a reduction reaction, we gain electrons. An easier way to think of this is in oxidation, the oxidation numbers become more positive. And in reduction, the oxidation numbers become more negative or reduce. Don't forget about your electrons. For oxidation, we see there are three minus zero, so three electrons that were lost. And for reduction, there were zero minus two, so two electrons that were gained. Always add the electrons on the left side for oxidation and add the electrons on the right side for reduction. Notice we add electrons to the side that is in need of electrons or the side opposite to the charge. Since there is a two coefficient here and a three coefficient here, we are multiplying each coefficient to the electrons in that reaction. So we have six electrons in each half reaction. And we finally have our half reactions. Step two, find the standard electropotentials for each half reaction. Here are our standard electrode potentials. And notice these half reactions are only written as the reduction reactions. Note, this table can be found in your textbook and provided on an exam. Step three, find E of the cell. All right, there are two different ways we can do this. Way one is by changing the sign of the oxidation half reaction. Since the half reactions are written as reduction reactions, in order for them to match our oxidation half reaction, we would flip the reaction and change the sign. Then add the new positive value to the reduction reaction's potential to get the overall cell potential of 0.48 volts. Way two, which is my preferred method, is not changing the sign. Instead, we would use the following formula where reduction refers to the cathode and oxidation refers to the anode. So we would plug in the corresponding values and continue with the math to get the same value as before. Now, what do you do if you are asked to find the cell potential under non-standard conditions? That's exactly what we'll go over in the next video so you don't miss this on your next exam.